peeps. Welcome back for our final full day here in Florida, at least for this trip. Final full day in Florida. Final full day in Florida. Florida. Suffering succotash. <laughs> we are gonna do something a little different. I don't know if you can see behind us, there's a rocket ship. We are at Kennedy Space Center in... Florida. Florida. <laughs> 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 and uh, we're going to head on in and take you with us. Here's a little information about ticket sales. It is $50 for an adult day pass, $40 for a child pass. They actually say that there's so much here, you can't even get to it all in one day. They also offer an annual pass. So if you're gonna come more than once, it is cheaper to get an annual pass than to pay the ticket twice, as you can see. $50 um, for one day, $89 for an annual pass. And today, I think we're also going to do lunch with an astronaut. Um, which is funny because the astronaut went to school in Norfolk, Virginia, where we're from. We just looked him up on the way here. It's astronaut John Blaha. Here is the main entryway. Look at that. This is beautiful. And we're getting in line to take a picture with the astronaut here in front of the NASA. Uh, hello. So they give you a map when you buy stuff. Here are the dining options. Looks like there are seven places. Rocket Fuel, Rocket Garden Cafe, Orbit Cafe, G-Force, Moon Rock, Milky Way, and IMAX Snacks. IMAX Snacks, nah. I love it. Um, and shops. And so this is kind of the facility. Here's the Heroes and Legends exhibit, the Rocket Garden, which is... I think right there. Right there. Yeah. That's neat. Um, so we're like right here. Yeah, because there's the entrance. Yeah, tickets. So right. we're right here at tickets. And so, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff to do, including the Atlantis. And I said there are bus tours. So there's the bus tour that I think brings you out here to yeah, the other ships. Yeah, because it looks like we're here, right? Yeah, so but we're the, right here, and the bus tour looks like it goes over here, These maybe? red dots. The red dots? That's so like there's it. a lot to do here. Journey to Mars? We're journeying. We're journeying. All well, right. we'll see what we can do. Right at the entrance, they have this rocket fuel food truck, snacks and coffee, chips, churros, pretzels, hot dogs, water, coffee, espresso, soda. Oh, and it's already open. And it's right next to the information booth. And here's the entrance. Doors just opened. Um, it's nine o'clock, pretty much on the nose right now. We're inside the gates. First thing on the left is the Heroes and Legends exhibit, United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. Some type of tour going on here. And the cool thing about this is that most of this seems like it's indoors. So it's a place to go, um, you know, kind of a warmer day or even a bad weather day, and you can still see plenty. And we're heading into Heroes and Legends. Apparently it's the new thing. So we're gonna check it out first. This walkway kind of walks through the rocket garden they have here. Oh. Atlas 6. Ooh, space aging. I can remember being inspired like most young children by TV heroes. I was inspired, of course, by science fiction. I think we all have popular heroes, you know, movie stars that move us emotionally or make us feel heroic. Because of my father. My father was a hero of mine. Because it protects me when my mother tries to pick me up. A hero is someone I respect. Like my mom. And I she always my mom and she inspired me to be a good person. My hero is Shelley Temple. I think my hero would be Winston Churchill. My hero is Dr. Jane Goodall. Elon Musk. So we just got out of the Heroes and Legends movie into the exhibit, and the movie actually was really cool. 3D with like this wraparound screen um, that kind of takes you into the mind of astronauts. It was really, really cool. They like blew air on you, they had lighting effects, um, special effects in the theater. It felt like a theme park ride. really cool. 
telescope. Looks like there's some type of touch screen thing going on there. <laughs> I didn't find the carrier because my uh, automatic direction finder is actually so this touch screen controls that monitor. World War II bomber jacket. Mercury survival knife. The stuff in the Inspired booth is really cool. They have like these old classic Amazing Stories books. Edgar Rice Burroughs books, uh, like John Carter, Warlord of Mars, um, assorted Buck Rogers toy pistols from 1930 to 1940, this Flash Gordon stuff, and it's always been said, like a lot of these um, scientists and astronauts and things like that are inspired by the stuff that they grew up with. Nowadays, it's things like Star Wars and Star Trek, but back then, it was Buck Rogers, it was Flash Gordon. Look at this cool setup. You can't go into it, it's uh, blocked off. But Mercury Mission Control, Friendship 7, 1962. I'm assuming this is a recreation, but on this one it says at these very consoles. So these might actually be the consoles that were used at the Mercury Mission Control in 1962. If it is, that is incredibly cool. fit two people in something that small. This is the Gemini 9A. Gene Kernan having spent three days inside this capsule. Wow. As you leave the Heroes and Legends exhibit, you come into the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame. This is the guy we're having lunch with today, John Blaha. Let's see, pilot. So this is, uh, I guess, the stuff that he was involved in. And he's here, in the Astronauts Hall of Fame. Check this out. Space flown United States flag in the first and 100th American space flight. It was aboard the Mercury Redstone in 1961 and in 1995 on the Atlantis during STS-71. The flag's next, next possible mission, travel to the surface of Mars. There it is. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. I think I'm gonna go try to have a seat in it. All right, we're giving this a shot, people. So this is my view. Woo! And there's Jen. So I don't know if you can hear the guy talking, but there is a tour going on right now, but they're piping it through the speakers. So even if you're not on the tour, you can kind of hear it, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. He's uh, over there, I think. We're gonna go into the Gemini spacecraft. Oh my goodness. I don't know. This seems a lot room, more roomy than the one we saw inside. I don't know. Two people. Let's go. So the Rocket Garden Cafe is kind of this outdoor eating area. Over the, here, the Journey to Mars, the Space Shop, up ahead, space, NASA Space Center Tours. There really is a lot to do here, including the bus tours. The world's largest space shop. Okay, pretty cool. And up, here, up ahead is the IMAX Theater. Right now it's showing Journey to Space 3D. Nominated by Sir Patrick Stewart. Nominated.
narrated by Sir Patrick Stewart. Over here is a full-scale model of NASA's Orion spacecraft. Look at that. We're heading towards the Atlantis, uh, but over here is the Orbit Cafe, which is kind of your usual, um, like, theme park, food court type food, burgers, pizza. In fact, it even says Little Caesars Pizza by the Slice. Well, they have, like, yeah. Food facts. Oh. Food facts. Yeah, food facts. Hamburger with fries, but fresh actually, salads. Like, astronauts need extra calcium and vitamin D while weightless. Huh. That's neat. Yeah. Astronauts need 20 to 30 minutes to prepare and heat a meal in space. A Mars day is 41 minutes longer than a day on Earth. And you can get a hamburger and fries there. You can get a hamburger and fries on Mars? On Mars, right? Huh. Sky above is looking a little ominous. We are heading into the Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibit. Just in time to head inside, it is starting to rain. There's some cool information here about things you can look for, such as the streaks of heat, um, dirt around the hatch. You can see the streaks of heat along it, the dirt around the hatch. Yeah, but so that's how they got in and out. The crew and the This looks like a mother box. Take it a apocalypse. This is cool. You can get in the cockpit of a shuttle or a replica. Actual size. Look at this. How cool is this? All the knobs and switches and gears and controllers. So here's one side, and they've got a side over there, too. I got this. And just like that, Paul saved us all. Let's do this thing. It doesn't move. It doesn't shoot anything, either. But I can flip all these knobs. Look at all these knobs. Holy cow. They're like, hey, turn on the AC. And the rad flow, turn it down. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna need you to land this spacecraft for us. Click, I'm down. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> the plane. There's a monster on the wing, just like in Twilight Zone. <laughs> wow. So here's the bottom of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. And you can see, like, supposedly there are pock marks. And you can, you can, I don't know if you guys can see them from the debris that it picks up when it takes off. It's all these little pock marks in the bottom. Because I'm already going to have difficulty crawling around this thing. Might as well bring a camera and make it more difficult. All right, so they have the astronaut like tunnels that I'm going to crawl through. Ugh. Like I'm Bruce Willis and die hard. <laughs> this is painful. So here's how I look crawling through this thing. My knees hurt, because I'm getting old. And I gotta slide down this thing. Let's do it. Because it's a spacewalk. You know, they float through these things, so it's not like they just crawl through. So check it out, I'm about to climb over this clear tube above the uh, the ground. There's Jen at the end. They're filming, you're filming. They're filming, <laughs> it's, it's very meta. So here I am, lying down on the tube. This is what's around me and below me. Oh yeah, next up, the slide, because I didn't hurt myself enough 
on that stupid tunnel thing, we're gonna slide. You know, this seemed like a better idea before I got on the slide. All right, here we go. Woo! <laughs> so that thing's what I was crawling in earlier. There's the clear tube. How do astronauts go? Toilets on the space station. Take a seat, use the camera. Parting ways, minor coaxing, <laughs> flushing, cleanup. I don't know that I want to use a camera when I go to the restroom. Whoa. That's awesome. We just did the shuttle launch simulator and they have all these pre-warning videos like you're about to ride Mission Space at Disney. And it's, it's actually not that bad. It's a cool experience, Dom. We're really glad we did. So here's the lunch with the astronauts set up. It's kind of like a table and cloth table. Uh, well, <laughs> a tablecloth table. Um, they have water pitchers on the table. They have the buffet back there. And uh, they have a screen that we're gonna watch something on. And then the astronaut's gonna come out and speak later. So the food is served all buffet style. Salads first, hot dishes up there. They also have a drink station here with soda cans and soda bottles. It's like iced tea, maybe. Iced tea and stuff in the distance. Orange juice, it looks like. So here's what I got. Cheesy pierogies, chicken, cheese, grapes, um, roasted potatoes, garlic bread. Jen got that stuff, plus salmon and salad and uh, potato salad up there. And check out all the desserts. We got a bunch of cookies, brownies, carrot cake. I guess that's a lemon bar, some type of strawberry thing. Parfait. But yeah, pretty decent uh, spread. And so the cost of the astronaut lunch is 30 bucks. Um, it's a buffet plus the uh, the speaking event with the, uh, the astronaut himself. Correction, it's not orange juice, it's Tang. That's cool. I was lucky, got hired in 1980 to be an astronaut pilot kind of guy, so I got to fly the space shuttle, you know, as a pilot a couple of times, then as an old guy pilot, that means you're a commander for a couple of times, you know, and then they got tired of me, NASA did, so they sent me to Russia, and, and in Russia they trained me, and then I went on the Russian space station, they trained me to be a scientist, I mean, you're going to be kidding me, a scientist. <laughs> anyway. So I had a good deal in my life, I know that. Okay, I'm here to tell you about the space program. Here comes the California coast. Wham! Right over the top of San Diego, 17,300 miles an hour, 45 miles up. I mean, this is good stuff. Wham! You become a shooting star. Oh my gosh. Spaceship. Boom, 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 boom. Kind of like the Hollywood movies now. And it's real. Red hot heat's rolling over the windows down the side. Blah, blah, you can't see outside. Blah, 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 blah. The only thing you're thinking about is I'm glad we had good engineers built this thing. Da, 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 I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and it comes blowing in here, and then wham! You're over Central Texas. Just got out of the lunch with the astronaut, John Blaha. That was actually pretty cool. Um, you know, he's an interesting guy. It's funny how excited he still is, considering uh, I think he said it's been about 20 years since he's been on a flight. Um, but it was still really interesting, really good food. Um, lots of variety, as you saw. Just good stuff. I mean, it was it was well worth the price. This rocket is the Juno. And this rocket is the Juno, too. So it's the sequel to the snarky comedy about the pregnant teenager. Next up, we're going to take the bus tour. They depart every 15 minutes, and they're included in the cost of admission. They say it takes about 45 minutes. Check it out. It's the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. This building was used in Michael Bay's Transformers movie. What powers the crawler transport? Okay, you have large diesel engines that operate or power big electric or uh, big electric generators. And then the generators power the electric motors that run the tracks. So it's almost like a big diesel train, so to speak. So there's, there's eight tracks. Each track has 52, uh, I 
can't remember, 52 or 57 clips, I'm sorry. They actually built this building here because they built their rocket inside of it. Right now there is a rocket inside of it. It's built horizontally. Once it's assembled, they'll bring our machine down. It's called a strong bag or an erector. It comes down by rail. Goes inside, they'll set the rocket on it. There's the pincher-like arms on it that will hold the rocket. That erector will take it up the rails to the top of the launch pad, as you see over there. And then it will stand the rocket up vertically. It is right now. It's not a rocket, that's just the strong back or the erector. You know that white part with the blue legs. Now, the gray part to the left of that is a big service structure. The tall, skinny part with the lightning mask. And then the A frame part is the rotating service structure. All of that is left over from the shuttle program. of this thing. For scale, there's one guy. And it goes all the way down. Over here is the Apollo 14 capsule. They have this whole room and wing dedicated to the Apollo missions. There's a moon rock over there. There's a flight plan over here. And it's just kind of cool to look at some of the stuff and the way they did things back then. These are hand, this is a handwritten flight plan. They went into space with that. You can see the spacesuits along the wall there. All sorts of cool things. I found the best piece of history here. Snoopy the astronaut. There's a whole story about him too. The statue was donated in commemoration of NASA's 50th anniversary in 2008. So this is like a whole thing, the Snoopy the astronaut thing. All right, folks. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed our look at the Kennedy Space Center. We had a blast. Kyle's filming us, filming this. <laughs> we will see you guys next time. Thanks for enjoying us, uh, enjoying us. Thanks for joining us on our Florida adventure. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for enjoying us.